Hi, everybody. It's the WaitingForNextYear.com podcast. My birthday edition. Big one. Big birthday. 41 years old. No, last year was the big one. Uh, Nobody cares about this birthday. And uh, I won't dwell on it, but for those younger listeners out there, you know what they don't tell you about your 40s? Ear hair. Nose hair. (laughs) These are, these are the memorable things about being in your 40s. A, a lot of you guys out there who shave your head bald, you, you get your home hair care. The one thing that they don't tell you is that you've got, you know, three inch long hairs growing out of your ears now that you're in your 40s. Um, so that, yeah, welcome. Welcome to the birthday edition of the podcast. I, I actually wanted to talk about the Cavaliers last night with Andre Drummond, their newly acquired center. Cleveland Cavaliers set a record for uh, worst home loss in the history of the franchise. And uh, it's a nice way to cap off a, a trade deadline a week where the Cavaliers were criticized for not trading um, for not trading Kevin Love, for not trading Tristan Thompson, for not giving away players that other teams valued but would be irrelevant in Cleveland because they are so far out of it for this entire season. And it, you know, one of the trade deadline pieces that was linked at Waiting for Next Year that we talked about uh, behind the scenes, we we were talking about this, it might have been the ringer, I, I don't remember who wrote it, but they gave the Cavaliers an F at the trade deadline. Trade deadline, F. Meanwhile, like how why based on what criteria i don't think the cavaliers did anything groundbreaking at the deadline they didn't get anything for tristan thompson they didn't trade away kevin love who's still the best player on their team even if he's not a key to making the playoffs as we can all tell um and then they they traded basically nothing to bring in an expensive guy, but a guy with talent, a guy with some value in the league, right? Andre Drummond. So they they make this trade, and I'm not sitting here telling you I feel good about the Cavaliers' plans or I know what they're trying to do to rebuild their team and become a relevant franchise again. The team that's only plan over the last 20 years has been LeBron James. I, I don't know what their plan is. I don't know how they turn it around. I don't necessarily think trading pieces and parts and second round picks for Andre Drummond is a part of it, but, but, what in the world did the Cavaliers do to give themselves an F? Did did they make themselves worse? Did they harm the future of the franchise? Did they trade away any chance of getting the next LeBron James by sacrificing first round picks? No. No. They, they, They took on salary. They added a player that the rest of the league valued and then it occurred to me and and I'm very supportive of the media maybe to an annoying degree for some of you I I defend the media even when they're bad like they're not the reason that the team suck they they have no impact other than you either like them or don't like them but it doesn't really matter so I defend the media but I find NBA media, especially national NBA media, to be absolutely impossible. Just frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. Because over the last 10 to 15 years, the NBA is, for all intents and purposes, it's been a fantasy league. And all those fantasy players out there who love chaos and wild transactions, the NBA was like, you know what? It doesn't have to be in your fantasy league. We'll, we'll actually do this. This will actually happen. And Daryl Morey of the Rockets and, and the, some of these GMs around the league, including the Cavaliers, you know, whether it was trading Kyrie Irving and, and Isaiah Thomas and all these different moves, the NBA has become an actual fantasy league. And so the, the media, the national NBA media, feels like it's their birthright. It's their right to see players like Kevin Love and Tristan Thompson move from playoff irrelevant teams like the Cleveland Cavaliers 
to playoff relevant teams in the on the west in the western conference or in the eastern conference wherever they feel like they're owed that and that by not trading Tristan Thompson not buying him out not trading Kevin Love and and trading zero a bunch of like nothing pieces and a couple of second round picks for Andre Drummond that the Cavaliers violated the code some fake code that says meaningful moves must be made and and valuable pieces must have the opportunity to group up into the playoffs so it was like the Cavaliers let down national NBA media because Tristan Thompson was supposed to be the eighth piece to a playoff team instead of the fourth piece on an irrelevant team that can't make the playoffs. I, it drives me nuts. It absolutely drives me crazy because the Cavaliers deserve a chance to build the team however they want in Kobe Altman's image uh, at, at Dan Gilbert's discretion. But because the players are so powerful and their agents are so powerful, you know, Rich Paul is out there saying, you know, Tristan Thompson doesn't want to play in Cleveland anymore. They, we have to get Tristan out of Cleveland. He's got to be, we don't want to waste a year of his career. He doesn't want to waste a year of his career. He wants to play in the playoffs, you know? And so Rich, th those agents, then their primary, they're the primary source for a lot of the NBA news. So these NBA reporters are kind of in cahoots with the NBA agents. And, and that's why I think the nature of the reporting is the way it is about the Cavaliers and their moves. Like, did the Cavaliers really execute an F at the trade deadline this year? No, no. But is Rich Paul disappointed? Is Tristan Thompson probably disappointed? And is NBA media disappointed that they can't now talk about Tristan Thompson joining up with a playoff team? as their as a, a key piece off the bench to to limit minutes for superstars so that you know I I mean that's what we're talking about here. That's what we're talking about. And I, I get it. But if you can't see through that, if you're a Cavaliers fan and you're co signing for this kind of discourse about your favorite team and you're buying into this nationalized fantasy view of the NBA I kind of feel sorry for you. I really do. The Cavaliers don't owe it to the league. It's not, it's not part of them building the brand to, to try and grant requests for players that they deem valuable to their culture, to their future, to the, like, even if Tristan Thompson is a stepping stone to help, uh, um, Porter or like some of the rookies get acquainted to the league. Like that's the that's the Cavalier. He's under contract. The Cavaliers signed him to this contract. That's like their purview. They're allowed to do that. And there's there's just this idea, kind of pervasive in the NBA, that that teams don't have free will. It's a players' league and and all that kind of stuff. And I, I mean I I understand. And I'm not telling you that these guys don't deserve their percentage of the revenue at the collective bargaining table. But in, ad in addition to the revenue, um, they're agreeing, you know, in agreement for that revenue that they're getting, the players are agreeing to the structure where the Cavaliers get to keep Tristan Thompson if they want to. They get to, they get to trade Kevin Love if they're able or keep him if they want because he signed that contract. And yeah, there's, there's some give and take and there's some agreement and everything else and but propping up the fantasy aspect of the NBA is not the Cavaliers' mission statement. And uh, I reject the reporting. I reject the after-trade deadline analysis of national reporters who criticize the Cavaliers for doing what they think is in their best interest or, or at least not bending to the least common denominator deal because they're supposed to trade Tristan Thompson. If they, had try, if they had traded him for whatever they could get, I would understand it. I would defend Kobe Altman because that's the nature of the contract. That's the nature of Tristan Thompson's 
impending free agency and his agent and everything else. But to criticize them for not, that's just something else. And I, I can't co-sign on that. I just can't. So um, that's the NBA trade deadline. Uh, there's really nothing to say about the Browns. They're going to do some new jerseys. I got to say, the opening of the XFL and seeing the logos, the helmets, the uniforms, it's really fun to see what teams do when they're, they're given kind of a blank slate. And some of the uniforms and the different things that have come up as the XFL has launched. Like, I'm not going to tell you I'm a huge XFL fan, but the what, what they were able to, to develop in terms of team branding is pretty sweet. Um, and that gives me hope that maybe, maybe the Browns, their redo of the uniforms. I don't want to make too big a deal out of it. Obviously, the last time they unveiled their uniforms, it was a really embarrassing ceremony. And the Caval- uh, Cavaliers and the Browns, like, they came out in these cloaks and guys like Dwayne Bowe. Um, paraded in front of everybody and everybody was there was no reaction but people stood up and took cell phone pictures and video it was very odd very odd so but I am I am hopeful that maybe the Browns clown uniforms of the last five years will actually get a substantial improvement this time around so uh, I assume that's going to be happening soon as we're uh, in the off season um, and then yeah We'll, uh, we'll talk tribe. I promise we'll talk tribe. There's nothing to talk about yet though. So, um, I didn't go to tribe fest. Um, it seemed like that was visiting hours for Frankie Lindor's tribe career. Um, which is unfortunate, but that's kind of the way things go. Um, so I don't really want to talk about that yet. Um, but thanks so much for listening. Here's to my 41st year of life <laughs> my, my uh my god how many years of podcasting is this like eight nine we're, you know we're coming up on we we did the 10 year anniversary of waiting for next year a couple years ago so that means we're, we're coming up on 10 years off and on of podcasting here and uh it's been a ride man it's been fun so getting old is weird getting old on the internet you know it, a decade of internet time feels like uh, two decades. So thanks so much for listening. We'll talk to you soon. It's been the waiting for next year.com podcast.